So hello everyone, welcome to this new video. Today I'm having a conversation with Hannah Martin. I'm sure you guys know about her and I'm super excited for this because Hannah is one of these dancers that started what I think is a great movement of like social media for ballet dancers and sharing their journeys and giving a healthy uh, view of what to be a ballet dancer is. And so I'm super excited to have a conversation with her because this is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to have in, I'm trying to have conversations that have meaning, that can create another conversation for you at home and with your friends and see a different side of ballet. So thank you so much, Hannah, for being here with me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to to chat and yeah, explore all the different things with ballet and social media. Perfect. I wanted to start with you giving us a little bit of an introduction about who you are and um, what what was your beginning. Who is who is Hannah Martin? Wow. Okay. How long have we got? So <laughs> at the beginning, I guess I kind of started dance in church. So my mom was kind of big in the church, doing a lot of dance leadership, um, and that's kind of how I got on stage um, straight away and got the bug for performing. I just love to perform. Uh, for anyone and anything so I think that's where I really started my love for performance um, which then kind of led me down the route of rhythmic gymnastics so when I was eight I became a rhythmic gymnast I um, was doing it quite recreationally until about 11 um, and I think it was then I think there's always a time in a, in a dance as in gymnasts in anyone's life where you decide no, I actually really want to do this for myself. This isn't my mum. This isn't my, this isn't someone else forcing me to do this. I want to be excellent at this and I will do whatever it takes to be excellent at this. Um, and I think that I know that decision was made when I was 11. I was like, okay, I'm going to do whatever I can to be excellent at this sport. Um, and kind of went from not being, you know, selected for anything, not being very good at it to, having kind of a quite a big career in rhythmic gymnastics uh, in Great Britain, where I managed, I think, 22 national titles. I uh, went to the 2018 Commonwealth Games, which was an amazing experience in Australia. Um, I went to a World Championships, World Cups. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's really when you make that decision for yourself that, you know, you reap those benefits because there's only so far you can go when it's just someone pushing you out from the outside. Um, and then from when I was 16, I decided that it was, you know, I, I had always had ballet at the back of my mind. Um, I'd already always done ballet as part of my rhythmic gymnastics training. I'd done the RAD grades, um, all of that stuff. Um, and I was like, OK, if I want to have a career in this, it's kind of it's already a bit late. So mm -hmm. we should probably get cracking. Uh, I mean, I don't think. I've heard of many stories where you know they've people have started kind of going down that route so late um and it definitely has had its many challenges especially in regards to the point work because as a rhythmic gymnast obviously we never went on point um I had done point work as part of my training but not to the same level or degree as probably many vocational students by 16. Um, I then ended up going on a tv show the Grace Dancer, mm -hmm. which was a TV show here. And I got through to semifinals, which then I ended up going to vocational ballet school at 18. Uh, I did a year at, at um, Elmhurst Ballet School. And then I ended up at the Bumbling Royal Ballet as an apprentice. And then I got my contract there and I've been there ever since. So it's been this kind of crazy wild journey. Um, learned a lot and I'm still learning so much, which I know mm -hmm. that, with, with the content that you make you always say that you're constantly learning and I loved what you posted actually on your story I think it was even just today about um that you're not teaching from a sense of like sp superiority you're teaching from a sense of just experience experiences we're all human we're all at the same baseline level and it's our experiences that actually put us in a position where we can help and teach others and I really love exactly. that thought yeah, I, so. I have the feeling that nowadays in dancers and also in some teachers as well, that we think that we are looking for the truth, like there's just one truth and that's something that someone can teach us. 
or something that you can teach someone, but that's not the case. Uh, we are all humans, we are on ex experiencing life and ballet uh, at the same time, and we are trying to to find whatever works for, for everyone and trying to, the, the ultimate goal is to, to express a story, to express feelings to the audience, not to find whatever it is that people think is the ultimate truth. Yeah. So uh, I, I think, think it's important. That, that's, yeah, that's a real interesting point because I always, especially when I was trying to transition so quickly, I was always trying to find the key. I would ask every single successful ballet dancer that I knew, like, what was the key? What was the thing, the one thing that made you go from here to here and I'm like as through experience I realized life is just not like that you can't there's not just one thing there's many keys and there's actually kind of many avenues to kind of getting where you want you just have to kind of decide which one you're going to go down and go down with it with confidence mm -hmm. and if you're always second guessing yourself you're never actually going to go down any one of the routes and you're never actually going to get anywhere you just find yourself walking in circles um so yeah anyway that was a bit of a tangent there we go already at the beginning <laughs> yeah I, I actually wanted to go back a little bit with uh, your beginnings in gymnastics because I don't know if you know about this or I don't know if anyone knows about this but before doing ballet I, I did trampoline I was actually wow. uh, I was competing like nationally and I, I wanted to start internationally and my goal was to compete in the Olympic Games but uh, well for uh, some reason I had to move to a different city and then I couldn't train there so I I end up stopping but uh, I know what is it like to to transition from being a gymnast to an artist and I know it's, it's really not the easiest I mean I was really young when I transitioned so it was not as as difficult I guess as it was for you but the way things work as a gymnast and as a ballet dancer is so different the way they give you the information the way you work on things the it's, it's like a different world. And so uh, uh, I'm, I'm just amazed that you were able to transition this fast and uh, learn so much in such a short time. And you're already an incredible dancer. So it's, it's like such a big talent, but also a lot of hard work, I believe, from your side. Yeah, I, did, I had no idea that you did trampolining. That's incredible. Because as you say, like elite sport, there is such a different mentality, I find than to to ballet for example I think because rhythmic gymnastics is such a short career uh, a lot of rhythmic gymnasts most of them retire by 18 so it's not it's not long at all the focus seems a lot more short-lived condensed whereas obviously the ballet focus is about longevity and I think that has taken me quite a while it's probably taken me going through surgery as well to kind of understand mm -hmm. wow like this is the long-term game. It's not just about how much you can get done in one day or one week or how productive can I be because I'm going to cram it all in as much as I can because I have to catch up. I have to be as good as I possibly can for this or that. It's actually, you know, this career, I want to be dancing for, you know, at least another 10 years um, mm -hmm. and I need to take care of, you only get one body. Um, obviously, as a rhythmic gymnast, we still, we were taught about recovery and stuff. But because it was such a short career, you are just trying to cram as much into your career as possible before it ends. Um, whereas with dance, the approach I have found is much more the long term game. Um, approaching it with a little bit, again, train smart, not hard. Um, which maybe I would have learned in my gymnastics career as I went along anyway, because I think it's a natural way of maturing. Um, mm -hmm. But it's certainly there's a much more holistic approach to how I approach my training for ballet. Um, also because it is such an artistic art form. As soon as you kind of, if you do overwork and overtrain and you start losing that little love for it, it's, it's so hard to do because it is about art. It's about expressing yourself. It's not about points. That was a big, that was a huge thing, you know, I always was like, so how can I get, what gets the most marks in auditions? So if I do like four turns, maybe <laughs> is that like equal, like four points or what? what, what is going to get me into the ballet schools? What is it that they look for that like gets me the points so I can get in? Mm -hmm. um, so I could drill movements. I can, you know, if you want four pirouettes, I'll give you four pirouettes. I'll drill them till it comes home. Um, so kind of coming away from, the point system and coming and approaching it from a more like 
again holistic point of view that actually it's you know it's great if you can do four turns but if you can't connect the movements if you can't be on the music if you can't pick up the exercises if you can't feel and breathe and move within the exercises then not like four pirouettes doesn't matter like you can do as like 10 and no one's going to blink an eyelid because ballet and dance is about the whole picture which mm-hmm. is something I'm I'm still learning and developing my idea of what ballet is to me because that's what ballet is to me again someone else maybe it is the tricks and the the turns and the for me when I first approached it that's all I saw because on mm-hmm. social media often that's what we see as well you know there's the tricks and the highlights but when you sit down and watch a ballet it's all the in-betweens it's all the the little things the little nuances um so yeah I don't know if that answered your question, but that was something yes. I've been learning. I mean, this is something we will we, we will touch a little bit later on. But uh, I, I totally agree, and it's also when you are watching your favorite dancers, what makes them special is that is the is the things nobody sees, is the work they have done behind the scenes, is all of that. That is, it really doesn't matter how they do, it, how many pirouettes they do, but it's about how if things don't work, how they save it, or that, yes. that eye contact with the partner, or. Yeah, all, all these things that makes makes it an art and that is and, the reason why and, we love and it. How you, and how you manage your workload as, as like just we're talking about life now as well, like how you manage the infinite, like as ballet dancers, especially when we're in creation process or if we're learning a new ballet or, you know, new new things, the amount of information you have to download and develop and take in and then you're expected the next day just to be on it Mm -hmm. um that that is I feel like that's such an underestimated skill that no one knows I think often I don't want to stereotype but like I feel like people often think artistic types are the ones who weren't smart enough to kind of get through school you know sometimes Mm -hmm. I feel like we can be pushed into that category not all the time but um but ballet dancers have to be so smart like to take in so much information every single day and actually take it in enough for it to come back out the next day in in the form of your dancing you have to think about it you know it's not it doesn't it's not just the physical baseline level that's a big difference as well I found between sometimes sport and and you know this art is that it's not just okay I'm now going to do 20 sit-ups yeah. and then I'm done or I'm I'm going to do this move and as long as I hold it for one second that's enough because that's gonna you know it's very it's you have to approach it with so much thought and attention and love and care um well uh, that to experience it I think to its fullest I think some people may approach it more from a very physical point of view and that can also work but for me I have to approach it from a very much more deep sense of myself um no, which I, I can definitely be think, exhausting yeah. sometimes <laughs> mm-hmm. I definitely think that dancers are uh, intelligent uh, and but it's just a different type of intelligence it's uh, I, I love always this picture that says uh, like you are you are trying to test an elephant how to climb the tree like and then you say that the, the elephant is dumb like you can't you can't do that you know we are different it's just a different type of intelligence yeah. and uh, I think it's not it's not showcased enough I also agree with that. I, and this is also one of the things I'm trying to do with what I do on social media is to to bring that side from the dancer that we can have conversations and we have things in our brain. There are there are so many things going on and so many questions that we have and intelligence in a different in a different way. And this uh, everything that we should be showing is a really interesting part also of our art form. Yeah, it's it's not just sure. people like jumping around. Yeah, there, there's a lot go- a lot going on. Yes, um, for sure. I wanted to continue a little bit, and so we know now about your background and how it was to to get into the company and how uh, for you is like a never ending process of learning and of uh, trying to find who you are as a ballet dancer and 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 as a person at the same time. So how how is it like to to be in a ballet company? How how do you feel it? How, it was what you were expecting? Uh, is this, is it uh, exactly how you were thinking it was, or is it different? How how do you see the work of a ballet dancer? I think it's really interesting because I think most of obviously my peers or people who have gone right through ballet school, 
um, have been kind of amping this moment up from the very, very start. This was, you know, their whole focus. And they probably had a lot more expectation going in of what it was going to be like. For me, I just kind of felt like every experience was kind of brand new because I went to ballet school and I was only there for one year. So that was like a whole brand new vocational experience. And then suddenly thrust into the professional world, which was, you know, exactly where I wanted to be. But that was like a complete, I didn't, I don't know if I had any expectations. I was just like, we get to perform and I'm getting paid to do it. How amazing is that? I think that was kind of my expectation when I came in. Um, I didn't, if I'm honest, 100% understand how ballet companies work. Um, I'd never really done much quarter ballet work because mm -hmm. um, COVID, in my, in my graduate year, we were kind of not in school for three or four months because of COVID. So I was only there maybe actually in the building six months of my graduate year anyway so and when we were there there was a social distancing for some of it so we weren't able to do as much quarter ballet work as maybe would have been helpful kind of going into um into a professional company where mm -hmm. you know your first year you are, are doing a lot of quarter ballet work and you need to know how to stay in line um and so I think that was probably I feel like a lot of people say this, but that's obviously the biggest shock is when you go in and you have to figure out all these skills very quickly because you're in a professional ballet company and there's a standard you have to hit straight away. Um, and I'm very much one who used to like to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And I will rehearse after hours. I'll rehearse before hours. I'll just rehearse. So if it's not up standard, I will rehearse it until it is. But with quarter ballet work, you, you can't rehearse that on your own. You can only rehearse that in rehearsals. So I think I found that extremely like difficult to, not to deal with, but difficult to approach because I couldn't approach it how I'd solved pretty much every other problem up to that point. I couldn't mm -hmm. just rehearse it because, you know, especially if you were second or third cast, you maybe got a chance at the end of a day to like go in for five minutes and then you had your show. So I was not used to this kind of preparation in rhythmic gymnastics. We used to drill our routines four times a day and it didn't matter if I was in line or not because I was the only one on the stage, you know? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was like a very new experience for me to try and um, learn those skills that people have developed over a long period of time very, very quickly. Um, and I, you know, I'm very grateful for, you know, the other quarter ballet members who kind of really helped me along kind of put up with me while I <laughs> figured out um got got my like hold on the ropes and stuff so um I think you know it's still something I'm every quarter ballet is all, member is always working on but I feel like I'm a, hopefully a bit better at it now um <laughs> and you learn I think I had to learn how to enjoy that work because before because it was such a shock to the system trying to learn how to not panic and actually enjoy it was like the next thing I was like okay this is what we're going to be doing for quite a long long while so I need to figure out how to um how to perform but then not overperform because you're supposed to be the same as other people because you have to be identical in the corps de ballet um so knowing the moments where you can kind of push yourself as a performer but also stay within the integrity of the group that was, again, another skill that I don't think is talked about enough because everyone often, when you watch a ballet, they, they see the beautiful, amazing soloists mm -hmm. and then the core, but they don't realise how difficult that core work is. You know, standing in line looks easy, but it's really hard. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, almost, yeah. uh, it's, like more, it's almost more important than the soloists. When you watch the performance... It, it's, it frames it, the piece. Yes, it it's, the, it's it. a whole thing. The story doesn't make sense if there is no one around you. It's yeah. it's just the way it is. So it, and it's really difficult. I I also had my time yeah. in Corte Ballet, not not a lot, but I I I had my time and it, it was it was really difficult. I have to say it was it was hard to to not just dealing with myself and uh, being new in a company, but dealing with the rest of the people around me and how how to be the best answer yeah. I can be with with others around me. It was very difficult. One hundred percent. I think also another thing that I didn't so that that was a side that I probably struggled with a bit more but the side that I didn't know I was going to enjoy so much is like having choreographers come in and like the kind of excitement that comes around that obviously expectation as well but excitement of like 
getting to see literally work created in front of your eyes on you or on your colleagues is just that atmosphere is something rather special I mean I love creating hence I'm a content creator but um, (laughs) I think getting to see it happen like we had a piece done by Juliana Nunez um, hopefully I'm saying that right but um, Mm -hmm. was it last year no I think maybe the year before but I remember the room was like I'd never felt anything like it it was like you could just feel everyone's excitement and the, he he's absolutely bonkers and I love him he, he was absolutely amazing to work with um and yeah I feel like those are the moments where you're like wow this this is what I became a dancer for like this feeling of being in the room where it happens you know so mm-hmm. I think that's something I didn't expect I was going to enjoy so much um yeah seeing seeing and being part of a new creation and this um this year we did premiered black sabbath um Mm -hmm. and i was part of that creation and again just kind of being part of the creation process this one was a little bit longer than the last one it was a a little bit of a journey up and down um but like once knowing even when you've gone through the low moments so then when we did opening night and we performed it and it was a world premiere and the audience loved it that kind of like feeling afterwards of like wow I went from the beginning of this process to right through to the end I saw it from its conception to its birthing is like that privilege as a dancer I think is something I never expected to feel so I don't know makes you feel so alive yeah mm-hmm. and I think also the the challenge for every dancer is to keep that feeling for as long as possible because it can become the routine is great, but it can become uh, very difficult, especially when you're working so much on a piece and like, especially before the premiere. So everyone is so stressed and everyone wants to be like, everything has to be perfect every day. And, and you still need to keep that spark inside of you, yeah. like that feeling that that exactly what you were expressing right now, that feeling that you are being part of something bigger than than anyone in the studio. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is what makes... Uh, great the work we do uh, I, I also had co- I had conversations with some people that they uh, I mean a bit older no and they and they were dancing many years ago and and they were telling me how how I was working with uh, choreographers like when they were working with uh, Nureyev or Kenneth Macmillan or old John Cranko all these incredible choreographers and how they had exactly that feeling that they were creating something bigger than than themselves and that's an amazing feeling I I I agree. I think it's is one of the things why uh, I chose ballet, or why not not why I chose ballet because I didn't know, but why I stay with ballet. Why yeah? Why I still want to dance every day to to feel that. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, this is amazing. Uh, like, I'm I'm surprised on on the things that you found uh, challenging and and other things that not for me was a bit different. I, I would say uh, uh, for me was. I think I I found harder what what I was uh, uh, talking about right now too. I I I started in the company and I was like full of energy and I would work my ass. I, it was it was I was I was crazy. I was all over the place. But then I I found a wall in front of me like straight away uh, as a uh, okay. This is this is a professional ballet world, but now you need to make a direction for yourself. Who do you want to be? You know, find the things that you need to work on, and or also things outside of just the studio. It's not just about dancing, but taking care yeah. of myself and mm-hmm. and becoming not just uh, like a plain dancer, but uh, someone that knows about the art form, some, someone that knows about culture and arts, and and that that was that was the biggest challenge for me because I I was just like I want to dance and I want to do this and I want to repeat that, and then injuries happen and well such Mm -hmm. a big story but uh, it's really interesting what what you say about uh, how you feel how you felt about starting the company I felt shocked when I first started because we didn't have too much on because we were again just phasing back from COVID so we didn't have too much on in my first kind of few weeks months and I found that as you say like I had so much energy I had so much fire I just wanted to do everything I was so passionate I was like going in the archives and like learning everything from the videos and I just couldn't get enough and then but like 
I started to realize like you can only go like that for so long before you do end up getting to some burnout um which I certainly did experience so I think as you say trying to figure out the work-life balance and it's something I'm still trying to learn but um and realizing that the experiences you have outside the studio actually enhance what happens inside the studio instead of thinking that the things that you do outside the studio like will make your your work worse it can actually enhance it because you bring new things um and sometimes if you're not so I used to get fixated on certain elements of my technique and I'm like it's so bad it needs to be better but I'm working on it and I'm just going to keep but you almost draw attention to it because Mm -hmm. it's all you're thinking about um and sometimes taking a step back and being like yes I know I'm working on this but this is not going to happen in a day like turnout does not come like you know the way you use your feet does not come in a day you can't no matter if you spend eight hours working on your feet it's not going to happen that quickly and because my career at that point had progressed so fast and that's kind of how I did it was just like drilling something into it like my limbs were falling off um I thought that's just how that's the formula that's worked that's the formula I'm gonna you know follow for the rest of my career um and realizing you know could probably do that when I was younger but you know as I get older I need to take much better care of my body and my mind because I think I think you know with injury you can you can work through you can rehab through injury but if you're mentally not okay you can't really get through anything you you know even if you're physically fine but mentally not okay you can't like it's hard even to get out of bed in the morning so I think you know learning I'm trying to learn for me the ways to keep myself mentally healthy because I know if I'm mentally healthy then I'll eventually reach my physical best um it's not the other way around for me yeah. anyway yeah yeah for me for me too I I had to learn that the 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 hard way uh, like last last season like uh, half of my face got paralyzed like from one day to the other that was a crazy experience, but uh, it taught me a lot. It, it uh, I was in a really stressful moment, and I, I, I trust my body more than my brain or my mind, and uh, I, I had to change that around. Like I, I had to put the attention on my, on my thoughts, on my, on my heart as well, on the things I was feeling, and uh, it's really, really important. And people don't, people don't realize about it, and. You cannot let also other people uh, step on you. You know, you you need to. Mm-hmm. If there's something you're thinking, there's something you're feeling. This will translate to your body, whether you like it or not, because yeah. our bodies are more clever than than ourselves. Like it's, it's it's amazing how our body can work in both sides for the bad, but also for the good. Yeah. People don't wow. people don't even realize how much work we can do, and also how much we can change our own bodies. Everything mm-hmm. is almost not. I don't say everything, but there are many things you can change about the way your body works and the and the, the way your body looks like and is and in the opposite side is the same also like a, your brain can destroy yeah. you if you are not I, uh, think, I think I definitely had that mentality of you know if there's something you don't like then you can you know you can work on it you can change it you can transform yourself I think I struggled to keep believing that when I had surgery because I felt like, oh, like my body does have limits. And I think that was a little bit of a shocking realization because as a gymnast, I never really had anything, any big injury that kind of put me out. Like I I would just have to adjust some training, but it was never, I could never not do everything I wanted to really. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think I found surgery was a little bit of a wake up call to like, there is certain boundaries that you shouldn't cross with your body in terms Mm -hmm. of the way that you if you take good care of it yeah you can push yourself but if you're not taking care of it then you can't push it and expect it not to break I think that was the biggest thing I was just like I'm just going to keep pushing every aspect and it doesn't matter if I'm not sleeping or I'm you know I'm not sleeping I'm it doesn't matter you know I'm you know finding sometimes nutrition hard when you come out of school and you realize you have to cook all your own meals and how Mm -hmm. to get that right but like I don't have time to think about that right now you know and you start 
you know, just focus it so again, fixating on your work and all these other things are like alarm bells, but you're not listening to them until your body actually breaks. And I, I wish that people, especially young, young professionals coming in, would prioritize those things first because then it it sets you up for the rest of your career. Um because once you have those things settled and the recover, you know, the recovery and the knowledge that you need to take care of yourself as a whole person, your work is actually just only going to improve. Um, so yeah, I think that's something I wish I could go back and kind of talk to my my younger self and be a little bit more like it's okay, you know what? It's it's like okay if you're really, 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 really exhausted and just need to take a nap. And then you can get back to work, you know, things like that, simple interventions. Um, it's OK if you're really tired and it's a weekend off, you're allowed to take the day, both days off. You don't have to go in and work yourself if you're really tired. If you're OK, then, yeah, by all means, go for it. But if your body is asking you to rest, like. I think I str- I still struggle with this a little bit, it's like at what point do you you don't want to give in all the time to like oh I don't feel like doing anything I'll just Mm -hmm. you know I'll just go home today I won't do the extra workout you know where do you draw the line with that because you don't want to fall into complacency or laziness but at the same time you need to take care of your body and not overtrain so I think being really smart and being intentional about the way you're going about things is not just doing a workout for workout's sake you're like okay I'm doing a workout because I'm wanting to target this specific area at the moment. Like I want to do an extra session in the studio because I'm working on this particular turn. I'm not just here flapping around like, yeah. oh, I should do some studio time. So maybe I'll do a few Grand Batman at the bar. Like go into the studio with an intention and you can probably get it done in half an hour rather than like an hour and a half where you're just kind of, floating yeah. you know what I mean so yeah I think the big the biggest thing I think uh, we we all should um try to be honest with ourselves I think this is probably the hardest thing anyone can ask but it's the is the it's the best uh, it's like you, you you were saying you know, like I need to be honest with myself and say like I'm I'm really really tired and I know I've been put in the work now it's time to rest but yeah. at the same time if I've been going out every day and drinking and not sleeping and then i say i'm tired i need to go to sleep i'm saying like maybe what you need to do is to change your habits you know exactly. like how how yeah. you need to be honest with yourself for the bad mm-hmm. things as well you know it's not just i'm oh, and, and life is wonderful yeah yeah 100 percent. i 100 percent agree with that 100 percent. i think i think self-evaluating and making the changes that you need to to make in order to be the best version of yourself for something I'm continually doing every morning. I'm like, I, I read my Bible and I, and I journal and I, I think about how I'm going to approach my day. Um, and at the end of the day, if it's not gone quite the, the way that I wanted it to, I, I again, reevaluate, okay, what went wrong? What could I have done better? What can I do tomorrow to make sure that the same pattern doesn't happen again? Um, mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. You've got to figure out what works for you and how to manage yourself to push yourself to be the best dancer but also a happy human because if you're not happy in yourself it's going to reflect in your work and I know it's so cheesy to say like oh you know when you enjoy what you do you dance better but like it's actually the truth (laughs) it's like literally the truth you can see the joy within someone when they're dancing from a place of peace within themselves instead of this kind of internal struggle um anyway that's what i find i think that's that yeah. i know when i can when i dance out of that sense of peace i dance so much better um but trying to find that every day is sometimes a bit difficult because i struggle a lot with my my perfectionistic mm-hmm. tendencies which i'm actually i'm doing a uni course at the moment and i think my research is going to be around kind of perfectionism and the pros and cons to it because there is you know the pros are we 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 see things we get better we we have high standards that's not a bad thing but it's the unhealthy perfectionism which I find I struggle with where 
things are sometimes fueled from a sense of fear of failure or fear of what other people think or fear of not being as good as I know I can be and kind of the fear fueling everything that I'm doing rather than the joy and the love for what I do fueling what I'm doing there's a yeah. there's a difference um, and the fear kind of it makes you go at everything with a sense of panic like there's not enough time and then that's when you start overworking over training but if you're coming from like a place of love and confidence then everything you do will have meaning that's what, and and you'll do maybe the same amount mm-hmm. but you'll do, do it from a sense of i know this is what i need to do i know my body i know myself and you'll spend less energy doing it because you won't be panicking all the time so yeah i think that's something i'm i'm trying to learn because i can let my inner perfectionist talk me down every single day to the point where sometimes i don't even want to dance because i'm like i sometimes feel that bad about my dancing because mm-hmm. i i so want to be better i'm like i i just lock myself away for maybe week or two make my technique perfect then I'll come back out but that's not how how this world works yeah <laughs> but well but, I mean but this is great everything you're saying I would say but it requires such a high level of self-awareness as well and such a internal work on our own feelings and uh, who we are uh, but it's something everyone should do that, that's for sure yeah but uh, it's a it's a real it's a real thing. Yeah, I I totally agree with you, in the, in that sense. And I, I struggle I struggle with that a lot. I'm not sure if it's perfectionism, what is my problem? But uh, definitely, mm, my motivations for things and uh, see where my say, see where my reactions are coming from. Where. Uh, it's not just if I'm scared of something or I'm happy about something, but what's the reason behind that? Mm-hmm. It's been such an important thing for me, uh, especially if I if I would find myself angry about something. And this my family helps me, helps me a lot with that. And they always ask me like, "What's the reason behind this?" Like, t- like tell yourself the truth. Like, stop pointing out fingers and and think why why this is bothering you. That it, is there something you you can you can do about it. Uh, do you need mm. to work on yourself? Do you need to check your priorities or or the reason why you do things? And it's yeah. super important. It really is. It really is. Okay. Uh, I want to move on because, well, like we could be talking forever. I have the feeling, but uh, we, <laughs> I want to, I want to touch many other things and uh, I want to go into your social media self and uh, why did you start your journey on social media? Actually, you, you have been doing it for quite a uh, I don't say long time, but for some years. And yeah, no, it's I, been a long, long time. <laughs> I, I I want to know like what's what was your your reason, uh, what was the the yeah. initial idea. So funny enough, I actually had a YouTube channel when I was eight years old, um, and it was I did I used to my mom was like I don't want you putting your face out on social media yet you're too young, I I thank her for that now I really <laughs> do because of the sort of things that I probably po- would have posted at eight years old, who knows. Um, so I did this channel with like little t- toys and I made little stories with them. And I learned a lot of my editing skills through that, you know, early stage of life um, and built that channel up to 20,000 subscribers. Um, and then when I did the Commonwealth Games in 2018, I saw one of my fellow athletes, um, Mel Wilson, who's a, a gymnast. I was a rhythmic gymnast, so I didn't necessarily get to spend any time with him because we were separate mm-hmm. disciplines. But um, I saw he was doing it and I saw he was doing really well with it. And I was like, I think it's time. I asked my mom and she was by that point fine with me, putting my face out there. I, th- I think it's time for me to, you know, start sharing like a bit more. I wanted to share. I had things I wanted to say and share with with people and take them on the journey. Um, I think as it went on I realized the thing I was most passionate about was helping people believe that they can make their dreams happen you know mm-hmm. I think so often we can get rooted in our in our heads that you know that can happen for them but it can't happen for you because of x y and z and 
ABC. But I wanted people to realize like, I, you know, I didn't come from a background that was supposed to succeed or go this far. You know, I didn't necessarily, we didn't have like huge, you know, fi finance behind me. Uh, Brisbane Gymnastics is a self-funded sport. You, you know, mm -hmm. you, you normally have to have a bit of money to be able to do it. You know, um, we didn't have, you know, the funds. But if you have a dream and you have the belief in yourself, then you can you can go and achieve it. You just have to think outside the box. You know, I remember training in all sorts of places when I was with gymnastics. My mum used to. My mum was my coach for a lot of my early career because there was no one else so we were like okay we can make this happen ourselves I was in you know squash courts um I was in badminton courts we didn't have the right flooring um everyone probably would have said like you can't succeed under those circumstances but like again if you have the mindset then you can sorry I'm going off on a tangent again no, no, but no. that was that was the idea behind the channel was to show people the reality because everyone always sees like the glistening end product of like wow she's now won the british championships or wow like she's going off to worlds um but they don't see like everything else that happens behind the scenes like mm -hmm. the hours of training the days where you feel like giving up the um the highs the lows the times where you feel disappointed you know i felt like it was important to showcase both sides so that people who are having those low moments can take maybe some hope or some courage from that that like we all we all have them we are all human and just because you are looking at someone's highlight and you're in a low moment you can't compare the two you know <laughs> um so I think that was kind of what my channel evolved into in the end um like for example my surgery uh vlogs and videos I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to share that part because I felt very vulnerable at the time but I was like I think it's important for people to to see this and to if they're going through a similar experience to be able to maybe find some hope I was like hopefully I will get back to dancing and this will all you know end up being obviously it ended up being that way in, in the end um but I've actually had like messages from from different people Paul saying how much those vlogs have helped them to get through their injury and their their surgery or whatever so um I think now the biggest motivator for me is like I just want to help people believe mm -hmm. bottom line just help people believe well this is this is such a great um how can I say uh, message for for the people, especially with the this new generation that that we have right now, and I think they they what they need is belief, and what they need is uh, hope, and uh, I think uh, also ballet world needs that because we mm -hmm. are forgetting the the very reason why we do things, you know, express feelings, give hope to the people. When you're when you're going to watch uh, a ballet like Giselle, for example. Uh, it's not just about the the beauty or or uh, watching the style or how high is the leg, but you you want to see uh, all those feelings happening. And you, of course, you are not a willy or you are not a prince from Germany, but we all feel love. We all feel uh, the loss of someone, regret, okay. and this is what we need. Uh, we need to we need to believe that we can be whoever we want to be. We need to believe that things are gonna happen, and ballet can give that. And I, and it's great that the message you want to give with your channel is that, because that's that's what we need. That's uh, human humans. We are like this. We we need that for our lives, and to and to feel part of something as well. Yeah, for sure. I and I think I you have done everything. You you have done great with with that message. I think. When you can see your, when I watch your videos, I, I feel that I, uh, I feel like I'm watching the real Hannah. I'm watching the her life, and some days is great, some days are it's not that great, but it's it's her. You know, it's not. I, I don't feel any I, any moment that I see someone fake. Is and that's 
that's unbelievable because it's very difficult. I, I, I've been doing also YouTube for a while and it's very difficult to be yourself uh, when you film. It's very difficult to show vulnerability. And, and so I really admire you for that. Well, I feel, I have to say, I think you're doing an excellent job yourself. So, yeah, right. I think, I've, to be honest, there's been, there's been quite a few videos of yours that I have watched and they've really helped, really helped me as well. So I, I really I love what you're doing. I think it's very needed in, in the ballet world. I feel like sometimes, I think it's changing now, but especially I remember when I was growing up, the ballet world seemed very almost inaccessible from the outside. Mm -hmm. Um it didn't feel like you were you were supposed to have such a perfect exterior to the outside world and you weren't allowed to have to show any weakness or flaws or faults um and still sometimes I struggle with that when I post on on social media because all I often see is my flaws and my faults and things that are wrong but I'm like someone needs to show that that you know no one is perfect it mm -hmm. might look perfect from the outside, but actually no one is perfect. We all have these insecurities and doubts about ourselves. And I think sometimes voicing them can help others who are also struggling with the same thing. If everyone just thinks, oh, she's perfect and she must just feel perfect all of the time because she's perfect or whatever. I sometimes feel like that, but with other people, I'm like, well, they must just feel amazing all of the time. Um, <laughs> But but showing that vulnerability, I think, makes it's what we're made for. We're humans, you know. We're supposed to feel other people's emotions and relate to them in that sense, and that's what helps us, I think, move forwards. So yeah. And uh, so let, let me go a little bit into the numbers now that we are talking about this. Uh, more than ten million views on your channel. A hundred k subscribers, recent. Uh, what are some of the lessons that you can take from this journey on YouTube and why why do you think that you are this successful? Oh, I don't know. It's It doesn't feel... I mean, 100,000, that was, that's was that been a goal of mine for like a long, long time. And I never, I don't, I never really liked talking about subscribers because the whole point of the channel was never... It was never about the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, it was... I wanted to create content that helped people and if that just helped one if all the videos just helped one person then it would have been worth it just one other person in this planet if it changed their life in some way that was what it was meant to be but obviously I think maybe having that more of that mentality was you know helpful I think in terms of succeeding on YouTube if we're going to go a bit more technical it's just I think you know it's just about consistency mm. it's just about being really consistent with it it's not just about uploading once and never uploading again for three, four months and uploading again. You need, for me, it's always been, if I'm just consistent with it, I know it will grow because I had done it when I was eight years old. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the way YouTube algorithms work. You, If you're consistent with your uploading, then your content will be recommended. Um, and so I think that was always, it just almost became part of life. It's like, okay, it's the weekend and an upload needs to go up. Um mm -hmm. And I think the most rewarding thing is is the the community that I've built with it. It's like all the people now I see in the comments are like supporting each other, um, which is nice because sometimes I find it very difficult to get back to all the comments now. But I actually sometimes I scroll down and I, I see someone's like, oh, I've got this performance on Saturday. And about five others have like commented, oh, good luck. You've got this, you know, and I'm like, wow, that's the kind of community I have been wanting to create. Mm -hmm. Um so I think for me, that's been kind of the the most rewarding thing about, about it all is kind of seeing the community just grow. And I think I had to push very hard at the start, very hard at the start. No one was in, you know, when no one's watching, you know, no, mm -hmm. one, you're not getting the views. You're just doing it on dry bones. No one's really interested, but you're like, I'm just going to keep putting it out there this is something I'm passionate about and you just keep sharing it. And then once it, then it, then it kind of hit a tipping point to the point where I didn't have to necessarily push so hard and things were, the community was still growing. So I think it is just about, I think it talks a lot. It's a, like, a lot like ballet as well. It's just like mm -hmm. you keep, you just keep 
every day. It's not about doing eight hours on one day and then not doing anything at all the other days. You just do, you know, you do your ballet class every day. You do your, you know, bits and bobs. It's not about sprinting. It's about the long journey. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely struggle with that. And it's not just about, for example, um, I, I, I don't feel like, oh, I, I need to get to this amount of subscribers, but it was more about uh, um, how can I get to more people? How can I make people uh, watch what I do, you know? Uh, it's not easy. People uh, don't even realize how difficult it is to keep creating videos and keep like trying to put all the ideas that are in your brain into a 10 minute video or whatever. It's, uh, it's stressful. Such a difficult thing. I tell you that. Mm -hmm. that. I'm already stressed about next weekend's video. <laughs> <laughs> Especially as, like I'm now starting to work with some brands, which is amazing, but then there's mm -hmm. deadlines. And I've never really, with my content, it's never, I've always set my own deadlines, but if I didn't reach them, it's not such a big deal. Whereas now um, trying to kind of reach deadlines can be a little bit more stressful. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, as ballet dancers, I don't know how you do it. I struggle, I struggle to get one video up a week. I'm like, when I see you uploading, I'm like, wow. He must have some great time management skills because for me, it's Not like really. on a Saturday after I've finished work and stuff or a Sunday morning, I'll wake up at like five and I'll edit for like eight hours and then I'll see my like flatmate and I'll be like, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can relate, uh, to, that. Editing, I can relate the, to that. The filming, the filming process for me doesn't take as long. It's the editing. Editing takes forever, but Yeah. <laughs> I think my, it, will, it will come with time, but uh, mm. I, so, sorry, what, what were you saying? No, no, my, it's, my, it's my perfectionist also comes out in the editing as well. So sometimes mm. I've had to, I have to get to a point of like, you know what? Yes, you could spend another three hours and make this video even better, but you might not even get the video up in the end if you spend that long. So sometimes mm -hmm. I've had to kind of be like, you've edited five, 10 hours already. Like, I think it's okay. Like, you can mm -hmm. put it out there now. <laughs> Sorry, carry on what you were saying. I interrupted you there. Uh, no, no, no. It's just, uh, for me, it's uh, such an interesting thing because what I struggle the most with is, for example, if I'm trying to film a blog, for me, it's, it's, it's the most like stressful thing because, uh, in, for example, in my in my theater, we have just one ballet studio. And so oh, my, wow. window, my window to film myself dancing and the tricks that I have to do to get some videos of myself is... Uh, it's quite difficult or if if not that means i have to go on a sunday because no one is there and then i can film but um yeah. the workload that i have sometimes doesn't allow me to like keep just you have like, to prioritize working. your work you have to prioritize then, your, your job it happened many times also that i film and then i'm like i don't like this but i cannot keep like just repeating 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 things and so i know this uh, it's, it's it's quite difficult, but uh, well, I think it's something that I, I will get better at in, in the future. And it's always um, in my thoughts, in my ideas, it's always like, oh, I wish we could have that and I could have someone in the studio with a professional camera filming this and getting these emotions and getting these steps. But there is no that person. There is no one that is me. Or sometimes I, I, I get some friends that they can film, but they are also dancing. So it's, I cannot just ask them to be my, my videographers. And so it's... It's a, it's a fight. No. It's a fight mentally. I, I know. I know what you mean. I think I think now a lot with my vlogs, I found a kind of a system that works, like mm -hmm. the kind of clips I know that I need to actually make something understandable. Because I think for vlogs, what people don't sometimes may realize is trying to make a vlog of your day makes sense. It's mm -hmm. sometimes difficult, especially when you can't film in certain areas or situations. I think now that my I have quite a few friends and colleagues obviously when I first arrived like no one knew me and it you know it was a bit weird the whole thing whereas now I have friends and colleagues who kind of understand a bit more what I'm doing um it's so much I'm finding it's getting easier and easier because they kind of want to be in it and it makes it more fun and interactive mm. when others get involved and it's not just me they're like I've done another rehearsal yeah. <laughs> it's like nice when when you get other people interacting with with the content so I think I think as I feel like because in the ballet world it's also becoming more like social media is becoming a more in, accepted part of the culture 
I think it's also made vlogging easier in that respect mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and I think, you know, um, I'm very grateful that my, my ballet company is, especially the social media team is quite, quite happy for me to, to vlog, um, do my vlogs in certain aspects and sometimes they encourage it. So that's always been, I'm glad that from them I'm getting the support as well. Cause I was, you know, I, I never want to overstep in any way um, in terms of, you know, being professional. Um, Cause for me, obviously that comes first is, is my mm -hmm. professional career. Um, and then, you know, the social media side, which is like a passion project that I, I do, which it is, it is, it's another job. It is. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you can relate. It's like, it's like working two jobs, but we love it. So we carry yes. on. It's, it's, it's more, more than the hours that, that we need to put on. It's like, a, I, I wish I could do more. You know, I wish, I wish I, I, yes. I, I had more resources and I could yes. create that, that dream that I have in my head. So it's, oh my I, 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 exactly the same. I have like, sometimes I have all these ideas and I get so frustrated because I'm like, I don't have the time or the energy or the space to be able to do all of this but sometimes I just have to write them down and park them and say you know one day I, w I, I might have time like mm -hmm. if there's a, a you know I touch wood I'm not going to get injured again but if there was like a period of injury you can make that or if there you know when you finish your career in 10 years time you can do it you know <laughs> yeah so yeah so um now that we are talking about the, all of this and coming back a little bit to the to the theme of your channel and i think when i see your videos i i feel like you promote hard work a uh, balancing life as we were talking before a healthy lifestyle with the uh, food choices and resting times and how you treat your body uh, how you think all these things for you makes you a better dancer but how you think those things that you're trying to to share with the world impacts you as a dancer wow i think i'm saying this thing... just 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 to frame it a little bit better i'm saying this yeah so the people watching right now they can they can see that it's not just a picture that you want to create or an image of hannah mm. but it's there's a reason behind things you know there is a there's a a reason why someone can make certain decisions in life and so yeah. they can take it as a real inspiration for that i totally yeah 100 percent. i think it's really like i'm now now i'm really thinking about it i'm like wow yeah you're so right i think doing all those things i this is something i actually have had to to define for myself as well because often on social media for example early mornings you know is classified as something like stereotypically that's really good for you and mm -hmm. you should you know it should be encouraged and then I started realizing that early mornings really like I could wake up at 4 a.m quite easily every morning because I'm such a morning person 4 a.m maybe that's a bit exaggeration mm -hmm. 5 30 quite easily I would be very happy waking up at 5 30 every every morning but then with the job that I have waking up at 5 30 a.m and then performing at 11 p.m sometimes that doesn't add up mm -hmm. so I think even people on my channel have seen how I've had to adapt and learn and change according to what I'm doing um and I think that is the biggest thing I want to promote on my channel is that not necessary to I don't want people to try and replicate I want people to try and think for themselves how can you shape as you say shape your life around your goals and your aspirations and your dreams how can you make changes to your everyday life so you can get closer to those dreams because they're not just going to happen like that they're not gonna if you dream really hard it's not just gonna appear even if you like really dream you mm -hmm. have to uh, put things in place as you say to make it happen and in my channel i try and show the things that I'm learning and doing in order to achieve this big dream and goal that I have each time. So like you say, like I'm hoping that sometimes I, to be honest, I still struggle with like, is this really the, the best way I'm going about this? Is this really the, 
the most effective thing I could be doing. And before I used to get very, it used to stress me out a lot. But now I realize this is a learning process. If I try something, I can try it. It's okay to try and it not be right. The only way you learn that something's not right for you is by trying it and determining then. I think I had a very big fear of that for a long time of actually trying new things. Because I'm like, well, this is the way I've done it my whole life. I'm not changing it because this seems to work and not thinking outside the box of like, but what if there is actually a better way? Like, what if there's actually something you can do to progressing further? I know this is the comfortable place, but where where is that further thing? Again, I feel like I've gone off your question, but no, no, no. the biggest thing, I'm, yeah, to promote my channel is learning how to evolve yourself to get yourself closer to that dream and goal and I think you know the nutrition something I've I think probably people on my channel have also seen evolve is something I'm still constantly working on um I tend to not actually share everything nutrition wise because I want again people to discover that for themselves because I think I was influenced a lot on social media by watching people and say oh look that works for them so that's what I've got to do mm-hmm. and I don't want people to especially with nutrition it's so individual and if people start to try and exactly replicate I think that's a very unhealthy approach so I try and kind of show ideas and little meal inspirations but not like I I generally won't do like what I eat in a day or something like that because I want people to discover that for themselves that's just my I, I don't think what I need day videos are bad I just decided that's what I'm going to do for myself um because I want people to, to discover like I've discovered on my journey mm-hmm. um what is not replicating but evolving yourself yeah um so yeah hopefully that kind of answers it's something <laughs> that's something I found yeah definitely and there is that uh, this is with ourselves us and our lives is one line and then the things we do and our choices is another line. And I used to get really frustrated because I was thinking that my line is always the same. And then what I change is here. But yeah. both lines are changing at the same time. And so yeah. the same thing you're trying at certain age, it doesn't mean that we'll try later on. And so I was, yeah. for example, I, I will be trying the same thing for pirouettes, let's say, no? And I will be mm-hmm. keep, I keep, keep trying. And then one day suddenly I lose it. And then I try to bring it back and it never came back. And I will be like, I don't understand. I'm doing exactly the same thing and it's not working. And I'm like, it's okay, you need to understand that you are not the same person that you were before. And your yes. body is not the same. Yes. And mm-hmm. so you need to adapt yourself and your life choices to who you are at the moment. Yeah. And it's uh, like really, really important. And I think you can, you can um, put that in any area of your life. We are not yeah. static. We are always in movement and we're always uh, improving or not improving, but changing. And so the, every choice that you have and you make, it, it has to be according with that. Yes, 100%. I did, I, I did some uh, a day in my life, a uh, 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 full day of eating. And then I, <laughs> I watch it back and I'm like, I don't eat that. <laughs> that <that's, laughs> I, I, I think that, that's another then... thing. It, it's like, sometimes it's like, I don't want to ever create content where I feel like I have to force myself to not be who I am mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing I want to create content that's always true to myself um so I think that's that's always been an important aspect of my content creation I never want to put something out there that feels again fake um because then I don't feel good about the content I'm putting out and that will also come across to everyone else and it's not helpful mm-hmm. for anyone I feel bad it's probably gonna end up having a negative effect on someone else as well so you know I under, I, I love that thought of like you're never the same person um because sometimes I struggle with the thought of like well do I actually work as hard as I used to when I was 11 years old I'm like you work differently it's not mm-hmm. about if you're doing the same or you're not it's you're a different person you're in a different environment environment is a big thing as well Mm -hmm. you are working as you know best at this point in time 
like you are trying to make the best choices possible in your current situation and if you're doing that there's nothing more you can do so stop stressing out that's me I'm yeah. always like can I can I be doing it better can I be doing something better with my life um like is there an aspect of my life that I could be doing differently to make me better at what I do um sometimes when you take that pressure off yourself it's I know it's better you start living with a bit more confidence instead of for me I always second guessing everything I did because I was like I'm doing this but is it really the best thing I could be doing at this point in time mm -hmm. and that's not a nice way to live so I think I'm I'm getting better at just knowing myself I'm like well um you know I know that some people can you know go go and party all night and do a great day of work the next day I know that I need my my beauty sleep and so mm -hmm. I don't judge them for doing that because like they can they they're capable of doing it but mm -hmm. I'm not and I accept that so I know I need to get my rest and and um work the next day I think just learning knowing yourself is is the biggest thing and knowing you know being wise about how much you push in the studio for example I used to just push in the studio until like my legs fell off not thinking about the consequences for the next day or the next week or the next month whereas now I'm like oh you know what I've got actually a really really long day of rehearsals tomorrow so if I work till 7 p.m tonight and do two workouts and two classes and blah blah blah, blah. I'm probably not going to get through tomorrow with a I'll get through it but I won't give out my best work so starting to, to again train smart I'm lucky that uh, in this moment in my career, I'm able to not not decide to not work hard, but I can I can speak with my ballet masters about the intensity of each day, and mm, so I, I yeah I know not not everyone has the that luxury, but uh, I I wear this the uh, whoop I don't know if you you know well it's a it's a fitness tracker. Yeah, yeah. And it basically tell, tells me like how much strain I put in my body each day and how wow. I how I rested. And so I can make my my decisions depending on that. And I, wow. I found that it changed it changed totally the way I work because the days that I know I can push, I'm like, today I'm going for it. And then the days that I that I, I slept really bad and that I pushed a lot in a day before, I'm like, I will still work, you know, I will still do the rehearsals, I will still do the things. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will be very conscious on, on the how much I push and the way I do it, and it, yeah. this has been really helpful uh, lately. I, wow! Uh, Have yeah. you found it's very accurate? Um, the problem is that uh, there is no such a thing as ballet, ballet rehearsal, ah. ballet performance. Yeah. There is dance or there is bar workout. But uh, at the same time, this device is really intuitive and uh, you can find where, whenever you are working. And mm -hmm. one thing that is really good, it also uh, checks the stress levels. And I found that, for example, in me, uh, there will be there is maybe some rehearsals that I'm there, there are many gaps in the rehearsal and I'm, I'm waiting for my time. And the moments that I'm waiting for my time to do the rehearsal are worse than when I'm actually dancing. I like I can be I can be for two hours in a really high stress zone without dancing and then go to dance and it's fine. And so wow. this, this oh, that says a lot. Wow. This really taught teach me a lot of how my mental is working and and I'm I'm like I'm am I tired because I'm working a lot or am I tired because I'm stressing a lot? You know? Again, the That's mind so is, true. is it can destroy the body. And so I can get very tired just from watching other people dancing. And so then I, I also have to make a choice no, on, on how, how I am behaving in the rehearsals. No? Like if I, maybe it's better if I'm focusing on myself you know, and I'm in the side and I can look sometimes, but at the same time I can check myself and try for my, the, to do some things for myself and I will be, that will be less stress. You know? Then if I'm just watching and listening to the corrections and I'm like, okay, now I, now I have to go and I should be doing the same. Or I should be doing better than the other. But you know, it's all these things playing in with your mind. Yeah. Wow. And That's so. It's so not really accurate. Wow. Yeah. But I think it, it re it's really helping me with many other aspects of my 
my life as a dancer. Wow. That's so cool. Sorry, I'm thinking about it now. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Because like, as you say, you the stress, I, I definitely felt in my first years that I felt, I think tired me out way more than the, the actual physical exercise that I'm doing, that I was mm -hmm. doing. So I think a lot of the things that I implement now in just my day to day, I actually don't think like I'm doing much less than when I was typically like overworking. I just think I do it again from a sense of a lot more peace and security. Mm -hmm. So it's you, as you say, you spend less like energy stressing because you're doing it from a place of security, like where you know what you're doing. Um, cause stress like is so tiring. Um, and as dancers, I think we are we the, the environment is stressful mm -hmm. it is like ballet ballet companies can be quite stressful environments um so learning i think the biggest thing is for me is learning how to cope within within the environment and find you know ways to minimize the stress that i have um you know there's things you can implement like the obvious ones which I've always done is like making sure you're super prepared for the rehearsals you do go to so that you don't feel under stress when you're there because you're like well I've prepared well for this so whatever happens I know I'm well prepared mm -hmm. or um again I get more stressed if I sometimes like if I haven't packed enough snacks if I don't eat regularly throughout my day I actually have noticed there's a correlation to my stress levels so I'm mm -hmm. like now I'm like I need to have that extra snack maybe it's not a physical thing maybe I just need to have like a small snack to make sure my stress levels stay low enough until I can get home and make myself dinner mm -hmm. so I think realizing that those stress levels can so impact your work and impact the longevity of your career is something I've, I've definitely realized and have implemented things to try and reduce those levels of stress mm -hmm. It's super important and, and it can be, as you say, very small things. Maybe you need, after five hours of being in the studio, close, sweating, maybe all you need is to take a shower and just go out and breathe air. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And people, I, I mean, I, I'm sure people, maybe will realize, but I used to be the person that don't realize about these things, you know? I should be the person that oh, I, I used to be. <laughs> I will be like many hours in the studio and I'm like, I don't know why I'm feeling like almost sick, like almost a sickness, yeah. you know? And then I will breathe the fresh air and I will be like, ah, now I understand. I yeah. was in the same area, breathing all this, like, let's say like this, it's like 40 people sweating in one studio. It's not healthy for the air we, we breathe. It's yeah. like this. <laughs> and so sometimes all, all you need is to get out and breathe some air and then you come back and everything is going to yeah. be right. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, like uh, learning a lot. And uh, so again, coming back to the self-awareness and, and understanding how your body works and, and how your mind works is super important. It is. Uh, I want to go where we are missing two more topics I wanted to touch. And uh, um, I hope you're okay with, we're taking a little bit longer yeah. time than expected. But... I, might, I might have about five, 10 minutes left if that's okay All with right. you. So let's come back to, let's go just to two thoughts. And the first one is, uh, what do you think about social media and how it's affecting dancers nowadays? Uh, because us being inside of the social media, I, I feel like we see the problems, but at the same time, we, we can understand them because we are working with that as well. So it's, yeah. it's a little bit different than just being like fed with posts and people with a leg yeah. here or doing 10 pirouettes mm -hmm. or... Yeah. So how how you see it's affecting you? Can you see it in your day by day or? Yeah, it's weird because I I create a lot of content, but I funny enough I don't I try and not consume as much content or the mm -hmm. stuff I do consume I try and make sure it's coming from sources which I find inspires me and doesn't make me feel inadequate or or not inadequate but there's certain I know for me there's certain things that like inspire me and encourage me like wow I, I want to try that or like inspires me an artist and other things that want to feel like they just want to squash me um so I think finding I think doing a a, a junk sale of your social media is sometimes quite good like unfollowing a cat like 
if there's an account that keeps popping up and you realize every time it's kind of triggering this sense of negativity in you, why on earth are you choosing to look at it? Like, mm -hmm. even if there's not anything fundamentally wrong, like there's nothing, it's within your power to unfollow and that's nothing against you. It's nothing against the person who's posting. You just need to find out what's going to make you your happiest self. So I think deciding on social media, to be honest, I... On social media, I don't watch as, as much dance because we're dancing all day. Sometimes mm -hmm. I try and make sure in the evenings I get like a little break from from dance just to clear my head. I like watching tennis. That's why I watch in the evenings. Um, uh, or I watch like a program just to, because my mind is often so focused on it. Um, I think social media can be an amazing tool to connect dancers. I think that has been especially for me is is amazing because i can literally communicate with someone on the other side of the planet um who has the same love and passion as i do like you and me like mm -hmm. connecting over social media um i do think people have to be careful how much you consume of it that's my biggest thing like be intentional about what you watch don't just keep flicking too long Otherwise, your brain has no thoughts of its own. You're only consuming other people's thoughts. That's yeah. why I, I I want to always make sure I keep creating my own thoughts and not just other people's. So I think a good mix of both, being inspired by others, but not being controlled. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's a really healthy way to see it. And uh, for the last thing, I just want you to give one piece of advice to any dancer that is watching this uh, from your career or your life that you think, I don't know, there's something people can yeah. watch, people can hear from um, you. Wow. We've touched on a lot of points today. I yeah. think, again, the biggest thing for me is just to, 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 it's gonna again sound so cliche but believe in yourself believe that the goal you have isn't so crazy like you can achieve it like you say when you put the building blocks in place see the air like find see the goal and then discover the areas that you can to cut, go and achieve it and it's just this but take it step by step day by day like each day I always like to call it each day is a gift we're always given a day and we get to decide what to do with it so like literally tomorrow today well today you can make the choice you know it's in your hands are you going to make your day go after your goal or are you gonna what are you gonna do with it mm -hmm. I mean for me I always wake up and I'm like why wouldn't I that's like that's my life you know but I think yeah believe in yourself because that's where once you believe in yourself, you'll want to go after the goals. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, thank you so much, Hannah, for your time and for your wisdom and all your experiences. It has been amazing to talk with you. It's something that I would love to repeat in the future. And uh, I just thank you so much for this. Thank you for having me. And you will definitely be featuring on my channel at some point once I can plan, plan a video. <laughs> Look forward for it.